Unaffiliated by Michael J. Solander. The story features a middle-aged writer who's struggling with his spiritual identity. The whole issue comes to a head when he's confronted with the death of his mother at the same time he's under a publication deadline and faces a, a, a challenging uh, assignment. Unaffiliated. As he said it, his face fell into itself like an undone souffle being yanked from a hot oven into a frigid kitchen. A long pause had preceded its utterance, and now an even longer one followed it. My mind raced. Did it deserve a pithy comeback? Clearly it was a condemnation of my status, but I quickly determined the man had not attended offense. Southerners are as likely to ask newly met acquaintances where they worship as easily as what part of the city they live in or where their kids go to school. Though I've lived south of the Mason-Dixon line for nearly 20 years, I had yet to develop a reply that isn't off-putting or one that fails to reveal more than I care to in such a seemingly benign social exchange. I was there on assignment, writing a story for a regional publication. My editor wanted me to bring my personal perspective to the exploration of the Southern Jew. The meeting had been arranged by a mutual friend, a Jew like each of us, and an individual of some stature in our community. My interview subject was president of a large Jewish charitable organization and a respected local businessman. This was only the first of many interviews I lined up for my piece, but it was off to an inauspicious start. Just moments earlier, we'd been connecting, heritage and background serving as natural affinity Jews, perhaps more than others, tend to rely on their common faith when interacting with each other. This can provide for a firm foundation and a level of trust, understanding, and appreciation. Bernie Madoff aside, this tendency allows for almost immediate fair dealing and open exchange. I guess I just don't understand why as an adult Jew in this southern community where less than 2% of the populace claims the filial bond to Abraham you have chosen not to affiliate with the house of worship. Moments earlier, we'd been joking, laughing, making small talk. Now his entire demeanor shifted. His eyes narrowed. I had a deadline. With pages of notes and questions at the ready, not even five minutes into the conversation, I was being confronted with a question I had never satisfactorily answered for myself, let alone from the stranger across the desk for me. I squirmed as I reviewed for the thousandth time what it meant to be a Jew, as if there were a universal formula to satisfy the question. Of course, in one sense, there is. In the Torah, the Jewish book of law, it states that to be a Jew, your mother must be a Jew. That's it. But this, by this definition alone, I passed the test. The lifetime dilemma for me was really more one of action and behavior. What do I need to do? How should I act in order to be consistent with my faith? I'm a secular Jew, I explained, ignoring for the moment the inherent contradiction in terms. I identify with the heritage and values and beliefs I was brought up with, but have not felt the need to affiliate with one of the local synagogues. This to me was met with more puzzled silence. My subject was not going to debate the merits of affiliation. He was simply going to dismiss me. My being Jewish had initially opened a door. Now it was an obstacle that couldn't be reconciled. He must have sensed my unease, and he quickly retreated to social protocol and didn't probe or try and dissuade me any further. The rest of the interview would be perfunctory. I drove home, pondering anew my dilemma about organized religion. Would belonging to a synagogue make me a better Jew? This past few weeks had placed the relationship with Judaism smack on my front porch in a way I had not experienced in decades. My mother's death a month earlier had set in motion a faith-questioning introspection for me that I had never experienced before. Uh -huh.